Hello Anatomy students, um, I've decided not to show you that video um, in this video. Um, instead, I've created links uh, in our Canvas assignment so you can watch those videos there. But I highly suggest it because they, I've got three of them posted and they are uh, very good. But where we left off um, was talking about red blood cells and what they do. And basically what happens is that once a red blood cell is mature, it enters into the circulation and it's going to deliver oxygen to all of the tissues of the body. But as it circulates through the blood day after day after day for about 120 days, it's going to be monitored by the liver and by the spleen. And once these red blood cells can't get through the tissue of the spleen and the liver, um, which is usually due to age, um, as the red blood cell ages, it's not going to be as flexible as it needs to be in order to squeeze through some little spaces. So if it can't get through the liver and the spleen, then the liver and the spleen um, contain uh, white blood cells called macrophages that are going to destroy those red blood cells. And that's a process that's called hemolysis. Now, uh, we have to be careful, though, with the hemoglobin because we can't just leave hemoglobin like floating out there in the blood because it can clump up and uh, block especially the tiny capillaries that are found uh, in, th in the kidneys and even in the tubules of the kidneys. So um, anyway, the hemoglobin has to be recycled uh, in a very precise way. Um, I mentioned that there are four different protein chains that the hemoglobin is made out of. Those protein chains are going to be broken up into to their amino acids and then recycled throughout the body. And the heme groups, though, have to be, um, uh, have to be taken apart, um, uh, with more care. The iron will go directly back to the bone marrow and will be used to create more hemoglobin. Um, but the rest of the heme group is going to be broken down into bilirubin, which is then going to enter uh, the gallbladder for storage. During digestion, the gallbladder secretes bile uh, into the small intestine, uh, and the bilirubin is going to um, enter uh, the intestine. It's going to be excreted from the body in uh, the feces and in the urine. Let's talk now about blood types. Um, you guys give blood. I know that most of you probably know what your blood type is, but what does it mean if you have type A blood or type B blood? It all has to do with antigens. These are uh, self antigens. These are glycoproteins that are found on the surface of the erythrocytes, and they are going to distinguish self cells from non-self cells. So if you have type A blood, I'm going to look at the, a, at the positive row up here at the top. Uh, if you have type A blood, it means that you have A antigens on the surface of your cells. If you have type B blood, you have B antigens on the surface of your cells. If you have type O blood, you have no antigens on the surface of your cells. And if you have type AB blood, you have both A antigens and B antigens on the surface of your blood cells. But the thing is, is that you don't just have antigens, you also have specific antibodies. Antibodies are proteins that are going to attach and clump um, uh, invaders, uh, bacteria or viruses or um, pollen, and um, it's going to clump them up so that they can be destroyed by other white blood cells. So if you have A-type blood, you have anti-B an, uh, antibodies. If you have type B blood, you have antibodies that will attack the A antigen, anti-A antibodies. If you have type O blood, which contains no antigens, you have both anti-A and anti-B antibodies in your blood, which means that if you have type O blood, you can only receive type O blood. You can't get B blood because you have anti-B antibodies in your, in your blood. You can't get type A blood because you have anti-A antibodies in your blood. And you can't get AB blood because you have antibodies that will kill all of these, all of these uh, glycoproteins. So um, you can't, you, blood type O can only receive blood type O. If you have type AB blood, that means that you have both kinds of antigens and you have no 
uh, anti-A or anti-B antibodies. You can't. If you have AB blood and you had anti-B antibodies, you could kill and attack your own cells. So that doesn't make any sense. For this reason, AB blood is the universal recipient because you can get A blood. You don't have any anti-A antigens or uh, anti-A antibodies. You can take in B blood because you don't have any anti-B antibodies. And you can take O blood because O doesn't have any antigens for your blood to be upset with. So AB people have uh, are the universal recipient. They can take in any blood and be fine. Type O is the universal donor. Type O blood can be given to anybody. But if you look, any of these blood types that have a positive sign after it have these little black boxes, whereas the blood types that have the negative sign after it have uh, no black boxes on their surface. That black box is the RH factor, which we'll talk about in just a second. So this chart is showing us that if you have A blood, you your blood cells contain the A antigen and you have the anti-B antibody. If you have type B blood, you have the B antigen and you have the anti-A antibody. If you have type AB blood, you have both antigens but no antibodies. And if you have type O blood, you have no antigens, but you have both antibodies. And what can happen uh, if a person who has A blood is given B blood is something that's called a transfusion reaction. And it's caused by a phenomenon called agglutination. Uh, what happens during agglutination is that, um, let's say that you're, uh, you are type A and you get by mistake type B blood. What happens is that your anti-B antibodies will attack the B antigens on those blood cells and clump all of those cells up together. And that's going to block small blood vessels. It'll block the kidney tubules. It'll block uh, the small capillaries that are found in the kidneys. It's going to stop perfusion of the tissues, and it can cause death. I mean, especially if it happens in the kidneys, though. If, if the kidneys are damaged in that way, um, then uh, it, it's a very severe a uh, critical problem. Um, if it does it, if it doesn't damage the kidneys, then usually um, healing uh, can occur. But that's what the transfusion reaction is. So there's another antigen designated by these little black boxes and also designated uh, by the plus sign here, which is called the RH factor or the D antigen, also the RH group. So if you are AB positive or A positive or B positive, it means that your cells contain this antigen. If you are negative, then that means that you don't have the negative. And honestly, it, it it's, it's going to play a large role for uh, RH negative women who are pregnant with an RH positive child. Here's why. If you are RH negative, you, you don't have any anti-RH antibodies in your body yet. But when an RH negative woman gives birth to an RH positive child, their blood mixes during the birth process. And now her, the mom's body is going to make anti RH antibodies. Once she's been exposed, now her body has become what's called sensitized. That first kid is going to be fine. But if she gets pregnant and, and is carrying a second child, that is RH positive while she is RH negative. That child is at, is at risk for attack by these anti-RH antibodies and the child can, uh, can be killed by its own mother unless, um, unless some treatment is given. Um, and so now they test for this uh, very early on in the pregnancy in order to make sure uh, that this uh well, conflict, I guess, doesn't doesn't happen. And I do have a video about um, the RH factor and its effect on pregnancy. Um, so please watch that um, because it does give some nice, concise information. All right, now let's talk about leukocytes or white blood cells. 
So leukocytes are different from red blood cells because they retain all of their organelles. And the reason why is because they have to perform protein synthesis in order to create the chemicals that are found in their granules. So um, they need a nucleus and they need uh, their DNA. And actually I'm looking at my time here and I think I'm gonna stop this um, uh, recording now. And um, I will create a part three all about leukocytes. Thanks.